Today I'm going to be showing you through and giving you a tour on our homeschool spaces. So I say spaces because we actually homeschool in multiple places um, throughout our home and we do not have a dedicated homeschooling room. We didn't build our home knowing that we were going to homeschool and honestly if we did we probably would have created a room but I think that room probably wouldn't have been used a whole lot. I really love incorporating our living space into our homeschooling space as well. It does mean that I have to be really purposeful with the things that I bring into my home, which is actually a really good thing if you think about it. Um, everything that we bring in, we use, and everything that we have here, we love. My name is Tiffany and this is Hinterlife Homeschool. I am a homeschool mum of two beautiful children. I've been homeschooling for four years now and I love sharing what I have learned, things that are working, things that have worked and are continuing to work for me in our homeschool. And I want to share that with you in the hopes that it might help you in your homeschool. So if you are new here, I would love for you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm gonna take you through and I'm gonna give you a tour of our space, our organization systems that we have going on. I am constantly coming up with new ideas and how we want to homeschool and you know improve things and change things up. There's lots of things on my wish list. I'm slowly working through them. Um, but for the first year of homeschooling, I really didn't purchase anything that I didn't have to because I knew that until you're actually homeschooling, you don't know how you're going to use those things. So I didn't have our trestle table set up. We just worked around our dining table. And um, I ended up getting rid of our dining table because it was glass and it drove me crazy because it was so noisy whenever we put anything down and it scratched noises and oh, it was awful. So, um, but then at the same time, the glass was really easy to keep clean because it was just, a, you know, washed out and it didn't get any, like paint didn't stick to it or anything like that. So every single thing that we purchase needs a lot of thought. And you almost need to have a pros and a cons list in terms of like, what are you going to be using that, pro that, that thing for, that piece of furniture for? And are you okay with having to keep it clean, like having to wash it down? Is it washable or do you have to, um, would you have to replace it if it got a stain on it? Is it fixable? Um, so I guess that that is the kind of things that I go through in my mind when I purchase something for homeschooling or for our space that we homeschool in, um, and how easily it is, how easy it is to kind of hide away if, you, if it's not something that you really want on show all the time when you have visitors or whatever it is. Um, we've gotten more and more comfortable with having our homeschool things out and about and open like with our moody boards we'll present things on our on our shelves and our moody boards and um that is that works really well for us but we don't like clutter we get overwhelmed with visual clutter in our home and we already have a lot of stuff going on with all the books on the bookshelf so we try to keep our spaces really clean and that means that we have a trolley and we have Anything that we don't know where we should put, we put on those shelves on the, underneath the trolley on our two shelves underneath our workbooks. And I just wheel that into our cupboard. So I never feel like I have to scramble and like hide a whole bunch of stuff in a cupboard like I used to. I have my trolley, it's my dedicated space for things that don't have a home just yet. Um, that is something that I really, really recommend because a trolley can fit inside a broom cupboard so easily. Um, we keep ours in our um, arts and craft cupboard, which I'll be showing you through on the tour today. Okay, so this is our home, main homeschool room. We adore this couch. It is so, so comfortable. It is modular. So I love the fact that we can switch this around and move it in all sorts of, I've had it in pretty much every possible layout. Um, we really do love this couch. Uh, we've got our little coffee table here. Um, this coffee table's 
quite heavy, which I didn't anticipate because I purchased it online, but it is a marble coffee table. So it's fantastic for um, painting on and all sorts of stuff because I can just literally wipe it all off. Nothing stains, it's nice and sealed. I always tend to have a little something in the center of the coffee table. Uh, this one's been really popular whenever we have other kids visit. They love getting their magnifying glasses and looking at all the different types of stones that we have. I got this kit as even like teeth as well. Um, I got this kit from um, National Geographic. There's even geodes that we haven't even got around to um, cracking open yet as well. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so here is our trestle table. We adore our trestle table. It is literally the tabletop can be taken off, lifted up. It's not heavy at all. It's just big. So you're just gonna be wary of, you know, your roof clearance and everything when you lift it. Um, but the trestle legs fold down completely. So they're fantastic. The little shelf that I've got right at the, um, the bottom here. Um, I've got two of those so I can put one there as well but because we kind of like we're using this kind of as our little ukulele holder and that works quite well. I like to have our instruments if we can out so it reminds us to, to play them. Um, so yeah that's that's something that we really enjoy. The chairs are really simple but super comfy as well for you know I mean the most we sit at that table is about an hour to do formal work so that's comfortable enough for us we've got our bookshelves i've given you a tour of our bookshelves already so i'll leave a link to that um, if you're interested in seeing a run through of our bookshelves i've got one already made here are our moody boards on our moody boards it always changes at the moment because we're creating a new homeschool rhythm um i have kind of a layout of what we've got kind of what we aim to do on what days sort of thing this is about to change i'm changing up a few little things so i'll be updating this shortly um but then we also have our little cameras that we love and the kids take photos and then they pop them up here so we do uh cameras we take photos for our um, nature studies as well and anything that's meaningful to them. They like to have on their board so they can look at them. They've got their little journals and their drawing books. We've got our flower press. So we press um, anything we find that we wanna um, dry, we pop in there. Uh, I just found this at Kmart. It's really handy. I love the fact that it's kind of creates the same sort of arch sort of effect. Um, and it's just to hold random, you know, our favorite pencils that we like to work, uh, work with. So in these drawers, I love these drawers. Um, I picked this up at a little shop. I can't remember which one. Uh, very inexpensive. You can get lots of drawers like this. I know Officeworks has quite a few. Um, in this drawer, I've got all of my math manipulatives, the kinds of things that we use the most. So essentially I follow the rule with whatever we use a lot of, I keep at the table. So if we use the cameras, which we do quite a lot, we keep them at the table. We use our journals a lot, so we keep them at the table. Uh, we use these particular pencils a lot, so we keep them at the table. You get my drift. It's, it's kind of like a convenience factor. The less I have to get up and move around and find things, the better. So in here is our most used manipulatives with Right Start. Um, as you know, if you know Right Start, it is very hands-on. So we have um, all of our card games in here, all of the card games, all of the like uh, place value cards, abacus type stuff. Then in this one here, we've got, uh, these are our fraction boards. Uh, we've got our 10 grams calculator. So we've got our little clock, paddle pop sticks. All of the main things that we use in our lessons. So these are the kinds of things that we use a lot for most lessons. Um, there are, of course, a couple of things that are a bit bigger for storage, so I can't have on the table, but I keep it down here. 
So our math balance is stored there and it's perfect. So I can just reach under, grab it up, pop it on the table and we've got it. So that is our desk, our little work area. We like to put some little things that the kids make and try and, you know, keep it keep it kind of, you know, fresh and interesting. I really love the fact that, you know, I don't have to be like, look at it, it's quite stained. Um, there's lots of, you know, Sharpie stuff, which I wasn't anticipating, you know, running through the paper, but it's not the end of the world because this is literally, this is proper wood. We can sand it down and restain it. And it's amazing. Um, so I will be doing that at the end of the year, just to freshen it up for next year. Okay, so over here, we've got another shelf. We've got our globes. Some books that we don't read as much now are at the top. And then we've got our science um, work that we've been doing. Some more kind of curriculum type stuff that we don't use at the moment. And just some other bits and pieces that we've made for science as well. On the bottom shelf here, I've got uh, a few things that we use a lot of, which is in particular, our right start blocks. I've also got some more paddle pop sticks as well. So this is for our geometry. I've got another board for us. Um, in here, I love magazine holders. <laughs> I cannot say more about them. Like, honestly, if you're not sure about storage, grab a magazine holder because it holds everything. Um, so in here, I've got some extra just uh, math sheets and grid sheets. I've got our little boards. We've got all of our little leftover like right start manipulatives that we don't use as much, but we still use. So we've got like our uh, ruler, the fractions board, instructions for all of the instructions for all of the manipulatives as well. Um, just all the other like random bits and pieces that come with Right Start, which we're not using yet because it's not um, suitable for our age yet, but it'll be for future lessons. We pop down at the bottom there. So that's where we keep all of our Right Start extra bits and pieces, instructions and all that sort of thing in these two little magazine holders. And then I've got our gather map. Uh, this is a great map. I absolutely adore it. It's a um, wipeable surface. Really beautiful to just like take to a picnic as well. It's just sitting on hooks. So I've just got one hook there, one hook there, and I can easily take it down, fold it up and take it up with us if we want to go out for a little picnic or whatever. But right now we're using it for our geography every Friday. So it works quite well just to be a point of reference for where we're, the area that we're covering. I have just purchased a little simple easel. It is a removable, this one's removable. I really liked that because I love to be able to have variety. There's a felt wall underneath. And this is a whiteboard, but it also holds stuff. So at the moment we're, we're using Blossom and Root for our language arts and we're mapping out the hero's journey. So we're filling that in as we go. And then on the other side, it is literally just notes and bits and pieces. At the moment, um, I'm using it for language arts and we're just you know, making little notes and things for our stories that we're reading. So I have a few little things in here. For example, I've got our virtual reality in here and just extra, you know, little remotes and things. Um, in this drawer here, it doesn't hold a whole lot. So these are just like our little random kind of sticker books, activity books and things for the kids for when we've got read alouds. Again, this is the same. There's some puzzles on this side. I've got extra puzzles in my, um, kind of paperwork uh, section as well. These are our most used, like little activity books and things that the kids love using. They're really handy in that. That's just an Ikea, uh, really simple um, TV unit. 
Then I've got my book basket for morning time. We've just got our selection of bits and pieces that we're working through at the moment. Oh, there's a feather. This is generally where I like to sit for our morning time. So that's why I like to have our book basket right there. It's nice and comfy and I've got my window and just love sitting here in the morning and reading. Okay, so this is my sideboard. I have a video that I have made for just my sideboard. Um, uh, it's a bit of a hack. I've created a couple of little solutions for some pretty ugly things that would not be very nice to have out in my living space. So let me show you through. Okay, so we've got a printer and I have a PowerPoint on that wall just uh, to the, the side there. I have created a hole where I've just literally, I've kind of pulled off the backing of this sideboard and um, allowed to plug in the cord for the, um, the printer. So all I need to do in order to print is if I just pull that out and open it, oh, it's a bit dusty, <laughs> but I just pull that out and open it. I mean, that's, that's proof for the fact that I don't print up lot um, generally I just you know a little a few bits and pieces here and there then I've got my filing um, I won't talk you through every single thing if you liking the look of this you can go and have a look at my in-depth um, run through of everything that I've got in this space because I've done a very in-depth sort of talking you through how I store these particular things and how it works with my reporting and all that sort of stuff so i will link that video above um, and you can have a look at it there so that is that covered i've got just knickknacks and bits and pieces in order to you know we're doing a um worm farm at the moment so i've got my how to guide in there because i have no idea what i'm doing and i'm also using that with blossom and root uh, so we've got lots of little bits and pieces. This is just kind of like my junk drawer, you know, where I kind of keep lots of bits and pieces. I've also got some math manipulatives and things, anything to do with math is in here. Um, this was before I started with Right Start, so I will probably be selling a few bits and pieces um, that we no longer need because we have Right Start now. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go with that. Then I've got a few little bits and pieces. So we've just started a reward system. Um, so this is kind of turning into my little homeschool shop. Uh, the kids are using some tokens. Tokens represents a certain amount. Once they get to a certain amount, they can pick from the um, little homeschool shop, which is really cute and they're loving that at the moment. So it's a wonderful uh, compliment to our homeschool at the moment. Uh, in here, I've just got all of my reporting bits and pieces. I need a couple more of these little um, magazine holders because I've taken some away in order to store some of my Right Start stuff and these things need a little place. So I used to keep them in one of these. Uh, so I need to get a couple more of those. They work so well. Uh, so yeah, and then I've got just, you know, spare paper, um, laminating stickers, and um, divide like little dividers for the, the folders as well. So that is my sideboard. I try to keep this fairly neat and tidy because it is one of the first things that you see as you enter the home. And for me, I feel like if I can keep this nice and tidy, the rest of the house feels clean as well. So it was really important for me to me to have this as kind of like a aesthetically pleasing sort of space where I know it serves a great deal of purpose for our homeschool but it's not obviously homeschool. Um, around the corner it is more homeschool like and that's okay I really love that 
but I needed some simplicity in this space to just allow some breathing, <laughs> some breathing space. This is our dining space. This is a very multi-purpose space. We do a lot of big projects here on this table. It is a huge table. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how big it is, but it's, it is definitely, it fits quite a few people. Um, and those chairs are very bulky, um, which we love because they're super comfy, but if we had have gone a smaller chair, we would have fit a heck of a lot more people at the table. Um, but that's fine. That, I mean, we only need six, that's fine. Um, and we can always put in extra at the ends as well. If we have visitors, there's plenty of space and clearance at the end there. Um, but it is a beautiful table. It is a very protected, sealed table. So, um, you know, things don't get stained on it easily. It gets wiped down. I don't have to be too precious about it. Uh, but the big thing for us was comfortable seats because if we're going to be working on a big project, it's usually, um, you know, you want to be comfortable. This is our board game table. We do probably more family board game nights than we do family, big family gathering dinners. <laughs> um, so it was really important for us to have some comfy chairs where the kids can put their legs up and you know sit in the positions that they like to sit like in the squat position and all that sort of thing and put their feet up and and sit um, curled up on the on the chairs and still be safe and not fall off or hurt themselves so uh, that was a big thing for us so the chairs were from Target and the table is from Early Settler Okay, so here is my craft, art, all-purpose kind of cupboard here. Um, this has pretty much everything we need um, that we don't have out there uh, in order to homeschool. Uh, we've got all sorts of stuff. So I've got things that, you know, we do use at certain times of the year, um, things that we've made that we want to put away, have a rest from. Uh, things that we used to have on the walls, that kind of stuff. Uh, so at the top is, you know, least used kind of things, um, things for me basically to, to uh, set up. We've got fabric and all sorts of felt and insulation type stuff, things to, to build from basically. Um, we've also got my homeschooling uh, like binder and laminator. We've got my sewing machine and like sewing material type stuff in there. Then we've got uh, some of our board games. Some of our board games are also stored in our garage storage too. Some of the, I try to keep a rotation with our board games because it just allows the kids to be able to choose them. But here we've got our um, uh, pens and, you know, more expensive kind of supplies for art that I like to just have put away and kept nice and clean and organized. Um, and we bring them out as we need them. They, these particular holders um, hang on the side of the um, cart, which is really handy. So I just take them off and I put them on the edge and it is brilliant. I love it. Um, so that works really, really well. Okay, so then I will I can take this out. Okay, so I have got a video on all of uh, a tour of this uh, cupboard. I've actually done a video on me creating this cupboard. This is fairly new. A couple of months ago, um, I turned this cupboard, which used to be our linen cupboard, into a toys uh, homeschooling craft art cupboard. Um, and it has served us so well. It has allowed us to have a space for all of these things and more. Um, I've been gradually adding to that. So I've got a little felt system and I've got color, um, polymer clay as well, uh, polymer clay and felt, um, and we've got clay. And, you know, it's just enabled us to have a little bit more stuff 
in terms of like feeding our creative side, which is fantastic. Um, that's what we want. That's the sort of things that we want to store. We didn't have that much linen, so this works really well for us. So we've just got you know, little individual drawers for particular things that we have a lot of. Um, and we've got more down here as well. These drawers are fantastic. Um, it just, you know, I've seen lots of amazing storage ideas for colored paper, but for us, you know what? We'd rather spend a few minutes looking for something than um, spending a lot of time putting it away. So for me, throwing all of the colored paper in together for the kids, it, it, that's how, that, that's, that works for us because they hate putting things away. So putting it away is literally picking it up and putting it in rather than having to color code everything. So that works really well for us. And it's just colored paper. So they don't mind spending a bit of extra time looking for the particular color that they're after. So it, it kind of depends on how you want to store your things, but for us, it's more about the putting it away. So we could color code everything and that would look amazing, um, but that's not how we like to put things away. How we like to put things away is quickly and efficiently and shoving it all in works just fine for us. Uh, we don't mind spending a little bit more time finding, sorting it and finding it when we're about to play. So that just works just fine. So then we have just to the left here, we've got all of our painting set up. Uh, we've got just some extra like little, little toys, you know, little cars, animals. The kids are still very much into, you know, playing. So we've got lots of little bits and pieces. Um, and then we've got kinetic sand and our nature play. Just things that we like to set up. We've got some colored rice in there. So lots of different kinds of things to allow us to explore and learn through play. So that is our cupboard. As I said, I've done a video individually on the creation of this cupboard. And um, as you can probably see, if you did see that video, it has grown a little bit more. We've got more things we've added to it and we love it. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this little tour of our home school. Again, it is ever changing. So I'm sure that I will probably have a, another update in the coming months for summer um, and, and just kind of, you know, updated some bits and pieces. I have some big things that I want to incorporate into this space as well. So I'm really excited about it. But for now, it is working wonderfully for us. We love our home school space. We're super proud of it. And um, I've loved sharing it with you today. So if you have any questions about what, where I've gotten things or how I go about, you know, particular things, please just ask in the comments below, or you can message me on my Instagram account as well if you'd like to just direct message me. If you enjoy this video, make sure you like it. It lets me know to make more things like this, create more videos like this. Um, I hope you've enjoyed getting a little insight into how I organize things, where I keep things, how I keep it looking, you know, relatively, um, you know, not cluttered or not overwhelming. Um, these spaces can be really tricky, especially when they're shared spaces and especially when you don't have a dedicated homeschool room. And um, I think it's really fun to try and make it work in within your home and make it kind of more of a lifestyle rather than like a homeschooling space where you just do school. Uh, my kids use these tables and all of our homeschooling equipment every day just as a lifestyle It's not just like when we do school. And that's the thing I love most about it So thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you in the next video